Hey there, Michael Griffiths here, founder of Referral Marketing Guru, and welcome to this week's Get More Referrals Today podcast. So, big weekend, part two, four by four by 48 challenge was conquered. Four miles, so 6.44 kilometers, every four hours for 48 hours straight. 48 miles in total, 77.24 kilometers, and the day after, big reflections, feeling good. And what I want to be able to talk about here is really what lessons have we really come out and learned from a, from a business perspective. So obviously, we're a business show. We've got businesses as our audience. And what does doing something like this actually do for yourself and your business? And to me, there's plenty of things. So that's what I want to touch on, and that's what I want to be able to get through with you today. Now, uh, if you are watching this on our socials or you are joining us uh, on YouTube, going across the screen right now is the link where you can still donate to help raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I think we're up to about 3,500 raised. It would be great to be able to get up to 5,000. Uh, it'll be up for the, the last this week, and then uh, we'll be giving the money over to Make-A-Wish Foundation to be able to uh, allow them to create more wishes for more children. So if you can donate, that would be amazing and greatly appreciated. Uh, but if this is also in the show notes. So the link is in the show notes. So if you can just find the, the link to donate, if you're watching this on Instagram, it's in our bio. On Facebook, it's in our bio, the link. So plenty of ways. And as always, uh, if you wanted to be able to help out, all you have to do is shoot me a message and we can send the link over to you. So now that's out of the way, let's uh, focus in on the, the challenge itself and what are some of the things leading up to it. So last week, we did part one of the 4 by 4 by 48 challenge. I talked about the preparation and what we were going to do, how I was feeling about it, and um, let's sort of pick up from the day before. So uh, early in the week, pretty normal week, uh, started sort of tapering a bit and giving my legs a bit of a rest um, on Thursday. And probably the first mistake there was actually not doing anything at all on Thursday. I should have done something. Uh, whether it was just a small little walk or whether it was just even uh, the gym or doing some push-ups or something. Because I suppose if you're used to doing things and therefore on a day you don't, you you feel sluggish. And it probably uh, just makes me think uh, more and more. There's this great book called Brain Rules. And uh, one of the things that our brain needs is movement. And when we don't move, then the brain doesn't operate as well as what it should. Uh, you think back to caveman days and and they would go up to sort of 12 kilometres a day in, in walking. We're made to move. We're made to uh, – our brain responds best when that takes place. So within our day, we should always sort of try to get movement happening in between, not just sitting at a desk or not just uh, being in the one space the whole time. What I'd learnt in the in the week leading up, and I learnt this uh, whole bunch of of ultra marathon websites that I was going through and looking and trying to find out about the nutrition and hydration side of things. That was uh, always a little bit of a concern for me because it's not something I've ever had to focus on. So I learned an awful lot around hydration and, and electrolytes and how to get them into our body and salt tablets and uh, hydration tablets and taking in water and making sure that the hydration side of things was really spot on. Um, as we know, we can go without food for, for months and months, but we can't go without water hydration for literally only a couple of days. So it sort of shows again that how hydrated you are allows you to work at an optimal level. So when you think about it, we probably just don't Get enough water in our days now since doing 75 hard i'm drinking four liters a day every day without fail and do that quite easily yet i think that's probably still not enough if you're if you're sort of working out and you're moving at the same time 
So one thing I was really happy with was our hydration process and, and how hydrated we were, which made every run really quite easy to do because of our hydration. So the big lesson from the beginning part was preparation. How prepared you are, having backstops in play so that if something didn't go right, that's okay. You've already got something in play ready to go. And just being prepared. I had written out uh, sort of each run, 3 p.m., where it was going to be, uh, 7 p.m., where it was going to be. So having that really clear made it much easier, especially at times when the fatigue set in and uh, you become a little bit delirious. And well, it was easy just to, to already have that mapped out and not have to do a great deal of thinking around things. Uh, as we got through the runs, the hardest run without a doubt was the 7 p.m. on the Saturday. So having gone sort of Friday, 3, 7, 11, 3 a.m., 7 a.m., 11 a.m., 3 p.m., that 7 p.m. on the Saturday was by far the hardest. Um, very, well, obviously, little sleep from the night before, but then no sleep at all throughout the day and probably did too much in my day. Um, I tried to keep my day fairly routine as per, per normal, but probably ended up doing more than what I should have. And that 7 o'clock became really, really difficult. But uh, all it meant was it took longer to finish. I think that one took like 55 minutes to finish where everyone else sort of took anywhere between sort of 37 and 45 minutes to, to get it done. Um, that one took a lot longer. But the power of sleep, because even just with two hours sleep after I'd finished that, before then doing the 11 o'clock one, and the 11 p.m. was really easy. And the 3 a.m. was pretty easy because there were two, two and a half hours worth of sleep before getting up and having to do those particular ones. So I think in life, it sort of, again, goes to show the power of movement, the power of water and hydration, the power of sleep. And they're things that we can all control um, ourselves and, and have the ability to fix those things up so that we can start doing things at a more optimal level. The 7 p.m. on the, on the Friday, uh, run number two, and uh, you will see across our socials that I've sort of posted nonstop um, either with videos or with maps or with uh, the distances being done to, to keep people up to date. And just before, I think about 6.50 p.m., and I, I poked something up getting ready for the 7 o'clock one, and I got a message back from, from Faye. And I didn't know this at all, um, but Faye's uh, daughter, little one, has leukemia and was uh, there in the process of making their wish from the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is the charity that we're supporting. And I was reading this at like 6.57, three minutes before the 7 o'clock run, and the power and how obsessed I then became for making sure that this was going to get done. That from that second on, there was never a doubt in my mind that all 12 6.44 kilometers would be finished. Uh, to have Charlie was was Faye's daughter's name, and and uh, she loves quokkas uh, on Rock Ness Island, and and that's maybe where they go in with their make a wish to do something around that. But it made me think, and I had this conversation then on Saturday with, with my little one, Sophie, who's eight, and I showed her a picture of, of Charlie um, and told her the story of Charlie having leukemia and being in and out of hospital and needing to have injections and medications. And, and we talked about just how lucky we are. And, and I was talking to Sophie about how grateful I am. Like, not only is she a, an amazing little one, but touch wood has been so healthy and and lives just without a care in the world and how lucky we are. And it really, it brought a tear to my face, um, both of gratitude of, of just how lucky we are, but at the same time that we get to do something and, and we'll do more and more for, for Charlie um, because it really touched personally. It showed that when you've got a driver, when you've, when you've become obsessed with something, you can achieve anything you want. 
quite often we give up because we we're not obsessed to the level that we that we need to be like you go or getting that result would be nice but it doesn't really matter if we don't like life's really not going to change and it's true right life probably won't really change when you look at people who have been from sort of the the depth of despair and then they come through to be able to make it well there's no wonder that that happens simply because they're at rock bottom. The only way to get from being at complete rock bottom is to become obsessed with being completely different. There is no other option. And I quite often when um, Soph comes out and, and we'll, before we are sort of working up to this and I'd run the, the dog track and Soph would come to a lap and get halfway and oh, I'm tired, I've had enough or I, and and quite often we'd talk and we'd go, okay, so just imagine that like the worst possible thing in the world was going to happen if you didn't get to, to finish off this last lap. Would you finish off the lap? Oh, yeah, of course I would. So how about we just finish it off and just pretend that the worst thing in the world is going to happen if we don't finish it off? See, I think we give up way too easy. We get... Society teaches us to give up. Society teaches us, you know, it's okay. It, it doesn't really matter. You could do it tomorrow. Uh, it doesn't matter if you just skip that day. You could just miss. You could do eight phone calls rather than ten. But you've got to become so obsessed with the commitment to yourself that, no, I'm not skipping the last two phone calls. It doesn't matter that I'm bugging and I'm tired and I've had enough you're still going to get it done because how you do one thing in life is how you do everything else in life. So if you've got a list of four or five things to get done today and you've still got two on them when the time you want to finish comes around, you've got a choice. You can put them off to tomorrow or you can commit to yourself and say, hey, these are the five things I wanted to get done today. Get them done. And that's how, as, as business owners, we need to be. We need to step up in how we lead ourselves because if we can't lead ourselves, how can you lead the people around you, your family, your team, staff, contractors, clients, networks? You can't. Another big, like real big lesson that every run that I did after I had a really good stretch, the run was so easy. So stretching is now going to become a huge part of my day going forward. I've got to stretch every day. Uh, it's amazing your, your hip flexors, how much control they have over pretty much your whole body, from lower back pain to knee pain to leg pain to muscle soreness. And when your hip flexors are, are free and moving, everything else is so much easier. Uh, in terms of being able to move and do things. So I knew stretching was important, but not to the extent that I now know. And, and it's just a real wake-up call that you can make yourself feel great by just simply taking 30 minutes to, to stretch. And it's easy, stretch in front of the TV, um, stretch while listening to an audio book, stretch while learning something off YouTube, stretch while listening to podcasts. Like there's so much you can do that allows you to multitask, but stretching is just what I now see as, as one of those key activities that we've got to get done every day. The messages of inspiration were unbelievable, and I just can't thank people enough. I got asked a really good question. Why? why? Why are you even doing this? I mean, in the end, we probably don't ever know to what extent we've got the capabilities within, our, within us to do things. I sort of picture that when my time's up and I walk up to the big gates and someone's standing there with a piece of paper with my name on it and it has all the things that I've achieved, what do I want that piece of paper to say? How do I want to be remembered? So there's a couple of real big reasons. Like making an impact and helping underprivileged children rescued animals 
is just, it's huge for me. So anything that we can do that is tough for me, but then creates awareness and funds for, for that is just, I'll, I'll run through brick walls for that because that's just a huge part of the legacy that I want to leave. It was a really big reference point for myself. I talk all the time around your cookie jar, David Goggins' ex, um, expression. He, he mentions it all the time, and that's where I've, I take it from. But you've got so many reference points throughout your life of things that you've done that you didn't think you could do. And every time you reach a point where you go, oh, I probably can't do that, you go back into that cookie jar and you remember those reference points. Well, in fact, I did that and I did that and I did that. I can, as if I can't do this. So the more you can callous your mind and the more reference points you can create, really, you're unstoppable. And that's the way it should be. You should be unstoppable. So besides the fundraising and making an impact and doing that side, which is absolutely love, there's from a personal side, just going, well, how much more is there? Now, I don't need to be doing challenge after challenge after challenge. I will probably because it's a great opportunity to fundraise and to be able to raise awareness and money for things that are that are dear to us and close to us. Like to, to just think and without really knowing, but I can only imagine like the, the smile on face face, being able to tell Charlie what we were doing and it was for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and that was something that was like that is powerful to me. Like that, it's emotional, it's powerful, it's, yeah, it sends shivers down my spine. So if we can do that to numerous people throughout the course of our life, why? Why wouldn't we? So that's exciting to me. It's also a great example to my one, to, to Soph, that you can do whatever you want. She's already talking about different things in a completely different way that she would like to do. And her whole attitude is, well, of course I can. I mean, if you can run 77 kilometres, I can do this and I can do that. So what a great upbringing for someone to be able to see their, their, their dad doing things that most people don't do. Now, it doesn't have to be running. It doesn't have to be even physical activity. There are so many things that you could do that allows you to be an inspiration for the people around you. The ones that really matter, like the, the people who you're really dear to and, and loved by. Think about that. Because to me, that's part of a legacy that we want to leave. So when I put all those things together, it's what the challenge was. When you start winning and you start doing things you didn't think possible, a couple of great things take place. Obviously, your self-belief, your self-confidence, your air of good arrogance. It's not about being arrogant. It's about the swagger. It's about the presence. Well, as a business owner, you need all of those things. People buy from people that they resonate with. You've got to be able to show your people that you can lead them, that you can get the results that they're after, that you're the type of person that they want to be around. So to be able to do all of that, you've got to first be able to lead you. You've got to be able to commit to you. Now, there's a whole different levels. I'm not saying go out there and run a marathon. Not at all. Just ask yourself, how can I do something that's going to challenge me today? That's going to callous my mind a little bit more. And maybe it's as simple as, hey, I'm going to drink four litres of water going forward from this point on. And if you're someone who only drinks like half a litre, then that's going to be tough. But as soon as you start doing it, you've now got something for your cookie jar. Maybe you get to give up eating a particular type of food, smoking. Whatever is stopping you from being absolutely amazing, maybe now's the time. And as soon as you do that, other people around you 
start to go, oh, I wonder what I could do too. And you have this inspiration that you get to put into the world. And you've got that ability. That's what I love about our people and our tribe and our networks is that you make an impact every single day. You have people who look up to you. You've got the ability to affect society more than what you even know possible. And it's up to us to do that. So this was a huge experience, one I'm just so grateful for. And in the end, it's the start of something, goodness knows where, and it's not about doing things just to do crazy things. It's about making an impact and it's about being an inspiration for people close to me and in particular for Soph. I've really appreciated you coming on the journey with me. Uh, love hearing your messages, love hearing the inspiration and the cheering and look forward to whatever comes up next. And hopefully you can be involved too and come and join us in whatever we do next. That's it for me. Uh, next week, we'll get back into talking referrals. I'll talk to you real soon.